The BBC sees nothing elementary about CBS's plan to reboot Sherlock Holmes. In this corner, we have the CW. In that corner, ABC. Two networks are duking it out over the reboot of a classic fairy tale. Harry Potter and the Klingon Bird of Prey both have something in common, and it's a step closer to becoming reality. And from the desk of Captain Obvious, Nicolas Cage is a giant bag of mixed nuts. Also, Kurt is here to dole out the harshness with trivia. All of these and much, much more coming up in today's edition of Slice. Covering all the news from every dark corner of the universe. Warning. Effects of time shifting may occur. This is Dr. Michio Kaku. I'm Peter Mayhew. This is Trisha Helfer, number six from Battlestar Galactica. Hi, this is Colin Ferguson with Sci-Fi Channel Eureka, and you're listening to Slice of Sci-Fi. Slice of Sci-Fi.com. Certain that I've forgotten something today. I'm Michael R. Menengay. I'm Brian Brown. I'm Sam Roberts. I'm Tim Adamick. I'm Brett Filipek. I'm Treble. And that is that the is cast the of cast characters of character. for tonight. Woohoo! Yay. 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 Well, we're the expanded version this week, aren't we? Yes, we are. I, I have gained four pounds. I do feel expanded. I do. I, I, I feel kind of bloated, actually. I, it's the winner. I blame the winner. <laughs> I, 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 I know it is. Bad genetics. Oh, Shall we do man. some news? Let's okay, go. please. And now, the news. There's some interesting stories this week I cannot wait to get to. So, so. let's go sci-fi uh, sci fi to sci-fact right off the bat. So the invisibility cloak took one step closer to becoming reality with news that scientists have cloaked a 3D object standing in free space. Nice. nice. Wow. So published in the New Journal of Physics, the researchers in, used a method known as plasmonic cloaking. Doesn't that sound like a made-up term? It, it does, does, it does. Yeah, that's techno babble right yeah. there. And it used, they use that to hide an 18 centimeter cylinder cylindric tube from microwaves specifically. Okay. okay. Oh. So some of the most recent breakthroughs in the field of invisibility cloaking have focused on using transformation-based metamaterials. However, this new approach uses a different type of artificial material, plasmonic metamaterials. Why the hell don't they just use a cloak and a spell? <laughs> I don't know. Exactly, <laughs> That's man. That's what I'd be doing. Yeah. That's, trust me, we'll talk, about, we, we, yeah. we'll, we'll talk about Nick Cage can, and his can, magic can ability. Oh, that's my can favorite story. death with this cloak? I'm just curious. No. no. So, so, the, so basically, the cylindrical tube was cloaked by a shelf of plasmonic metamaterial to make it appear invisible. The system was, was tested by both directing microwaves towards the cloak cylinder and mapping the resulting scattering both around the object and in the far field. Now, the cloak showed optimal functionality when the microwaves were at a frequency of 3.1 gigahertz and over a, mo- a moderately broad bandwidth when they did that. So mm. they kind of hit it pretty hard there. Now, the researchers from the University of Texas in Austin have shown previous studies that the shape of the object is irrelevant. Oddly shaped asymmetrical objects can be like both Brian. cloaked. Yeah, like me, basically. Right. I am <laughs> definitely all points and angles. <laughs> so, or my really? I see round parts. Yeah, well, yeah, definitely round parts. Uh, round is a shape, right? Mm. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh, so moving forward, one of the key challenges for the researchers will be to demonstrate the cloaking of a 3D object using visible lights. Yes. Yeah, I was going to say right now all you're doing is basically cloaking cell phones. So Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Or true. something that, you know, you can create a dead spot for somebody just from a, a, that'd be cool. If they could do that with some of my clothes I so that. I look sl- like slimmer, that'd be awesome. No, I think it'd be great to put your hot pocket in it. <laughs> Coldness mm. center still. Yeah, moving right, about the microwaves. Moving yeah. right along. Right, Keep going. right. ABC wants to take a tale as old as time and freshen <gasps> it up a bit. Of course they do. <laughs> Following the success of Once Upon a Time, I knew fairies were the new vampires. ABC is turning Beauty and the Beast for a potential television run. No, it's not a reboot of the series featuring Linda Hamilton and Ron Perlman. Instead, it's a series based on the classic fairy tale. Written by Jericho co-creator Jonathan E. Steinberg, the drama project is described as a fantastical slash period reimagining of the classic fairy tale set in a mythical, dangerous world wherein a beautiful and tough princess discovers an unlikely connection with a mysterious beast. So it has a finite, wow. finite length of run then, hopefully. Yeah. <sighs> well, you know, that. technically all television <laughs> series do. It is eyed as a potential companion for Once Upon a Time in the Sunday 9 p.m. time slot. Okay. The reboot pilot for the 80s TV series is still in the works for the CW. No word yet on if the series might be picked up. It should be interesting to see which series changes its name first to avoid yeah. viewer confusion, because right now they're yeah. both Beauty and the Beast. 
<laughs> no, uh, no confusion uh, there at all. Somebody, so. they're playing chicken right now with it, I'm sure. Well, Fantastic. my thing is, is Pretty it, and the ugly. who cares? Because, I mean, y- you want something different with this, this standard tales, right? Oh, yeah. absolutely. You don't want the same old thing. In fact, we're getting kind of the same old thing again. It's like, mm-hmm. really? Yeah. Well, they, yeah. Ca- blood they start out interesting. They start out with some different premise, mm-hmm. and then they fall into oh, the same old, same old, absolutely. same old. And they have it's such fantastic costuming. Yes. That's <laughs> beautiful. Hole. Well, right. costuming, you know, it is something. So, uh, why don't we take a quick break, Mike? Because we got some bigger stories and we're not going to be able to talk them. I so. can okay. do that. What's up, babe? I've been thinking we should start practicing philanthropy. Yeah, sounds good to me. Sweet leaf, take your hand off my. I'm trying to have a serious conversation. Um, uh, hmm. Don't you want a little foreplay first? What? What, you want to just jump right into the philanthropy? What do you think philanthropy is, anyway? Um, well, or, uh, something dirty, isn't it? No, silly. Philanthropy is donating money to support something you believe in. Donating money? Clemper, babe, I ain't exactly Bill Gates. You don't have to be rich. Even a little bit helps. Well, I don't know. I'm not really all that passionate about anything. Except you, of course. Don't you ever think about anything except sex? Well... You like slices of sci-fi, don't you? You should support Farpoint Media. Honey, you don't understand. I love Slice, but it doesn't cost anything. It costs something to make it. I don't know. Bandwidth, streaming the studio, podcasting fluid, all those things cost money, and if Mike doesn't have them, he can't produce the show. Huh? All you had to do is go to sliceofsci-fi.com and click the donate button. Yeah, but... I think philanthropy is really sexy. In that case, there, I did it. Oh, Sweet Leaf, you're wonderful. Reactor leak detected. Hey, guys, this is Trieel. I just wanted to call and say congratulations on your 410th episode. First, I'm a first-time caller. I wanted to tell you this. Never watch Terra Nova, as you've probably already figured out. My dad yeah. loves the show. I don't know why. Mm. Just stay away from it. Hold your dad. But we'll, uh, we'll try. Congratulations and uh, see ya. Thanks. Thank That's you. That's pretty uh, awesome. I couldn't stop watching it. Ugh. Really? I know. I couldn't either. I got to the end of it. I never I managed did. to care. Uh, I did. Well, All right. Enough. We got news uh, to talk yes, about. Yes, we do. Yeah. So. Yeah. Actually, this story is going to make Brett kind of cry. Huh. So the okay, UK cool. Star Trek fan who spent 10 years converting his living room into a replica of the bridge from the Star Trek Voyager, mm. Tony Elaine reportedly spent $155,000 on the replica, but there's one small problem. <laughs> he doesn't own the flat he converted into no. Voyager. Yes. yes. It belongs to is soon to be ex-wife nice. who has decided she wants to sell the flat as part of the divorce proceedings. Oh no. And that means Stop. that Tony will have to dismantle the Voyager Bridge which includes the high-tech bathroom, voice activated blue lighting, air conditioning, a command console, and even his own transporter room. No, I'm sorry. Tragic. High-tech bathroom? Yes. I wonder. Yes. What did the, you got to go in the 24th is, century? Is there a motion activated bidet? Of course. <laughs> and when it's you go, a dry you say, make it so. I mean, it's make it so number one. I'm going one. number two. Make it so <laughs> number one. <laughs> yes. I'm yeah, going right. number two. Right. <laughs> Toilet paper, quilted, extra soft. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But it's between... Uh, awesome. So poor Tony says this. He says, Just, to say I'm gutted is an understatement. It's my life's work. Dude, you need a new life. And it looks like it's going <laughs> oh, into man. a skip. Uh, I admit there were tears. A skip? Oh, yeah. yeah, it's going wow. into the trash. Wow. That's yeah. such a bummer. I'm going to go raid that trash can. I'm telling you right now. All right, mm. get your ticket, Dumpster, man. I'm dumpster diving. <laughs> If you've not yet seen the BBC's updated version of Sherlock, you've missed a oh, treat. Oh, yeah. No kidding. Indeed. The it's first insane. season is currently available on Netflix streaming as well Yay. as DVD and Blu-ray, and the second season will air in the U.S. later this year. Yay! Produ- produced by Stephen Moffat, the series has won acclaim and fans <coughs> on both sides of the pond, so it was probably only a matter of time until a U.S. network tried to emulate that success. <sighs> oh. no. Yes, that's right. CBS is planning to try with a pilot oh. called Elementary that brings the story of Holmes and Watson into modern times. <laughs> hmm. Elementary, get it? Yes. Ah, that's so funny. <laughs> According wow. to the UK's The Independent, Sherlock producer Sue Vertu says, Vertu, yeah. Vertu says her team was approached by CBS about creating an American version of the show, but then the <sighs> network turned down the idea. Then along came the news that this new version was in the works. Hmm. Hmm, I imagine according that. To, yeah, according to Vertu, the timing seems like more than just a coincidence. 
Sources indicate the BBC is considering a lawsuit to keep the series off the air Do because it. they feel the Americanized version could impact the ratings and worldwide sales of the BBC version. Please, can yeah. I get yes. on that bus? Please. Yes. Yeah. I, I mean, don't see how they can. Sherlock Holmes is open to information oh, across the world, we've guys. Got, we've got we've got it house. We don't need it's this American version. Oh. Yeah, I know. That's their that's our American version. We've done it already. What? It's pure. It's brilliant. It's beautiful. I know. I know. And I, I agree. I love it. I'm just saying, yes. I'm, how do you get better than The Batch? You don't. You don't. You can't. Just don't even try. CBS, go elsewhere. Uh, yes. And your title Go ruin something else. Mm. Actually, the title is kind of clever. But it's... Oh, but it's, it's, but it's kind of An lame. obvious no. pun. Oh. Yes, yeah. exactly. I love obvious puns. You hate them, Sam. So. Exactly my point. Not so funny. <laughs> <laughs> just call it Holmes. Holmes, oh. yo. <laughs> yo. <laughs> it's a gangster retelling. Oh, right. Set in Harlem. Moving there right along. <laughs> Moving along. You're both cut off at this point. A couple weeks ago, we said scientists would find a way to bottle the energy in one of Joss Whedon. We'd sell it for an energy boost. Now, to that list, we should also add Stanley, folks. Mm-hmm. Oh, my goodness, yes. So, oh, yeah. at the age of 89, <laughs> Lee is about to show no signs of slowing down with the news. He's launching his first ever official website. Later this week. What? Really? really? Yes. Not Set time. to go live on February 7th. The real Stanley.com promises exclusive scoops on Stan's latest projects, behind the scenes looks at the worldwide events that he will <laughs> attend, and games, contests, of course, all of that stuff and more. I love that man. Now, if you're listening to this as we record tonight, you go out there and click and register yourself. Now, here's the thing you may get all who register will receive. An invitation to a QA with Stan, which, of course, will be hosted by a mystery celebrity on the site's official launch day. Okay. Mm. So you they automatically totally get that. To, they totally have to do that with Pam Anderson. That would be awesome. Oh, that would actually. be awesome. That actually. would be cool. So, and also the site promises there will also be prizes for those who pre register as well. So there you go, Toys. folks. Go out there and uh, register for Stan's new thing. Cool. Nice. Yes. Okay. Are you guys ready? Because this is my new favorite story of the year. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're so young, though. I'm, it's, oh, it's, it's, it's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. For the upcoming Ghost Rider sequel, actor Nicolas Cage says he tapped into not only his love for the original comic book character, but also to something older. You're really struggling to, to, to read this Magic. without laughing, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> Magic. Cage says that he read a book called The Way of the Actor that theorizes that actors are all descendants of medicine men or shamans of the village. Oh, my. <laughs> Wait, wait for it. Wait, it's better. Trust me. Cage says these shamans would don costumes and go on flights of imagination to solve problems in the village and that they might appear to have magical powers. Okay. Right, due to yeah. the drugs. Yeah. For, his, for his role in the Ghost Rider sequel, Cage says he tapped into that as well as painted, painting his painting himself with black, and I'm quoting, with black and white makeup to look like an Afro-Caribbean icon called <laughs> Baron Samidi or an Afro-New Orleans icon who is also called Baron Saturday. Cage also sewed <laughs> magical trinkets into his leather jacket he wore while filming scenes in Spirit of Vengeance. I'm quoting again. I would walk on the set looking like this, loaded with all these magical trinkets, and I wouldn't say a word to my co-stars or crew or directors. I saw the fear in their eyes, and it was like <laughs> oxygen to a forest fire. I believed I was the Ghost Rider, he says. I that was after eating guy. a pound and a half of peyote. <laughs> I love this guy. Yeah. Yeah. I, love I hate him. him. And that's my favorite story of the year. Dad, I love this guy. Okay. Is, I love the crazy. That's and awesome. Suddenly the castles and the shrunken batch. heads all seem very normal. It makes, it makes perfect sense. I would be rich and bored. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, he's not rich anymore. He's in trouble. Yeah, Let me he's so okay, get yeah. this Tim, straight Tim. here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So in order to connect with his inner actor, he donned blackface? A black and white face. Black and white. So he looked like Baron Samadhi. That's taking method Smarty. to a whole new level. Yeah. That's, I, taking, I, that's <laughs> taking meth to a whole to new a level. level. <laughs> exactly. No, it no, makes me so happy. It's more like peyote, because that's what medicine man would eat. You know, yes. honestly, it sounds like he's, he's, he's talking about alchemy, and alchemists used to eat mercury for crying out loud. Maybe right. that's Maybe very does. possible Maybe he was the eating only metal lead, that's not crunchy. Lead paint. <laughs> lead paint. I don't know. Chips. Uh, do we have time for any more stories, or should we just... One more, real quick. Okay, let's talk about this one. Let's talk about the... The, the uh, Evil Dead news that came out really oh. recently. So Lily Collins has decided that she will not be part of the Evil Dead reboot after all. <gasps> oh, The young oh. actress was offered the lead role <sighs> nice in the upcoming eyebrows. reboot of the Sam Raimi classic and has decided she will drop out of the project, according to Hollywood Reporter. Now, she said Collins had the offer and was in talks to star as a young woman trying to kick a drug habit when demons from far scarier addiction rear their head. Now, the deal broke down because... 
scheduling interests. Oh, scheduling really? issues, problems, problems. Uh, me, I say that's a very convenient excuse. It's yes. like creative differences or right. um, uh, putting right. irre- you know, putting what irreconcilable, irreconcilable differences. differences on the divorce papers. Yeah. Yeah. It could mean gotcha. anything. Yep. Good yeah, the, the scheduling was probably due to when the paycheck was going to arrive. <laughs> <laughs> Something like yeah. that. All, All right, right, do we have some trivia? Trivia time. Yeah, All right. All right. Put on your thinking caps, kids, and play along with the gang. Hey, it's trivia time! Well, hello, Slicers. This week's trivia comes to us from Robert Marsh in the UK. He said these are TV shows he grew up watching in the United Kingdom back in the 1970s, but I only know that one of them was ever shown in the US. Here comes our first Ooh, clip, obscure. and uh, I'm just going to play you some character voices to start off. Oh! Monty Python. Simon? Simple si- uh, Simon. Simon. Draw, does drawings. Okay. Uh, uh, here's a longer version. <laughs> Hello, my name is Simon. And I like to do drawings. <laughs> Simon and the chalk drawings. Simon and the chalk drawings? Yes. Look, I am right about this. Drinking the soup. Straight uh-huh. out of the soup. Maybe. It mustn't do that. <laughs> Sounds like my stomach after a little too much. Pizza. Okay, maybe not. Did, did some of that peyote show up in the studio? Or? Yeah. Oh, it's Ghost Rider with Nicolas Cage. Any? I have no clue. Okay, this voice yeah, was not. the Iron Chicken, and this character <laughs> was the Soup Dragon. Finally, these guys. Okay. Okay. Well. <laughs> are Clangers. Clangers was a popular stop-action animation show. It ran from about 1969 to 1972. The writer and wow. narrator was Oliver Postgate. <laughs> now, unfortunately, uh, the DVDs are only Region 2, region so two, you either yeah. need to find a region-free DVD player or uh, look on the internet yeah, uh, sure. to see if you can find some of the uh, Clanger time. episodes. Wow. Okay, get ready. Here comes our next clip. She wrong. says funny things. Happy day, boys. Happy day, Mrs. Warner. That's because she's not a happy one. What's a happy one? Someone is happy, of course. Yeah, man. Stumped. No clue. And the longer version. Why were you staring through our window? I heard you coming. What? New people. We need new people here. Why? We've got to stick together. My trees. Who's she? Early Harry That's Potter. Sandra. Her mum looks after the museum. It's that British show, isn't it? Yes, I know. <laughs> she says funny things. What was your first clue? Happy day, boys. Happy day, Mrs. Warner. The background Warner. noise. The That's Foley's not as good as it here is in the U.S. What's a happy one? Someone is happy, of course. Wow, this music sounds so familiar. (laughs) This music sounds so familiar. Okay, that was from a somewhat scary children's show called Children of the Stones. There's only seven episodes. came out in 1976. Fortunately, Children of the Stones is available on Region 1 DVDs. Okay, here comes Hmm. our final clip of the day. It's just one long clip, and this TV show was definitely seen in the U.S. Five top men, dead from natural causes. Five supreme examples of manhood struck down in their prime. (laughs) Is there a pattern? Uh, Not that I can see. Why didn't you say so? You want the benefit of my incisive mind. No, just a second opinion. Oh my Avengers? god, it's the <laughs> Avengers! Yep. Is that okay. yes. 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 Yeah. Thank you. Emma Peel. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. This isn't my high school marching band. That's awesome. I That's the that. Avengers. I love Hunt that. As Mike Gambit and Joanna Lumley as Purdy. Wow. Nope. Yes, the same Joanna Lumley who no. was in absolutely fabulous. fabulous. And no. she and was Dumbledore. looking pretty fabulous in the new Avengers. The new Avengers. Which ran in 1976 and 77. Now, this I show had nothing to do with Avengers. the Marvel comic book yeah. series. Wow. This show did have everything to do with the original Avengers show, which ran in the 1960s. Ironic. The new Avengers also starred Patrick McNee as Steve. Huh. Well, that's wow. all for Robert Marsh's yeah. 1970s television memories. If you have any trivia clips nice. you'd like to submit, please send them to mm. sliceoftrivia at gmail.com. That's fantastic. Good wow. stuff, Kurt. Yeah. Doling out the harshness, definitely. Yeah, right. All righty. Stumpified. We'll be back with more right after this. we 
greatest saga of all time is coming to the big screen in spectacular 3D. Experience the wonder. You refer to the prophecy of the one who will bring balance to the force. The excitement. You believe it's this boy? The force is unusually strong with him. The adventure. At last we will reveal ourselves to the Jedi. At last we will have revenge. Oh my! This February, experience Star Wars like never before. Wipe them out. All of them. Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace 3D. Only on the big screen, February 10th. System ready. Ahem, stupid phone. This is Will from uh, New York. You know, Second Empathy. Guy going to all the cons. Just at Metro, uh, Detroit Metro Airport, leaving Confusion. Confusion was a very nice little con. Uh, highlight for me was the Rocky Horror Muppet Show. Yes, you heard me, the Rocky Horror Muppet Show, in which I played Scooter playing Brad. Honestly, it was a lot of fun. It was a, got a lot of great laughs out of the crowd, and had a really good... Also, some parties, some good uh, concerts, and a lot of just hanging around and seeing friends and things like that. Next up next weekend is Conflict, the North Pacific Northwest Folk Convention. I'll let you know how it goes. Later. And we'll have that final report next week for you. Thanks awesome. so much. This, this is, is super Connor. I would really have never cool. pegged Scooter as a Brad, but all right. <laughs> that sounds fun. That it sounds fits, fun. It fits, actually, so yeah. I'm, I'm pretty I'm okay with that. All right. That is pretty cool. All righty. Well, <clears throat> got a final story? or We, uh, we got, got a couple of new uh, final mm-hmm. stories. Bring it. Go uh, for it. Sam, go ahead and talk about X-Men first all right. class. Students at Xavier's School for the Gifted are getting a sophomore year. Yay! 20th Century Fox recently announced director Matthew Vaughn and the cast of X-Men First Class will reunite for a sequel. Yay! That's good. No word yet on when the production may begin, but I'm glad. Uh, You also also forgot, uh, will January Jones be able to act her way out of bag? Oh my goodness. And will she get pregnant by somebody else in the cast again? Oh my goodness! What? <laughs> what? Yes. Yeah, that's. Didn't you know that January Jones? That was the she big scandal. Did not hear that. Yeah, no. she no. was pregnant, she and got, she 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 has not said who the father is, but she got pregnant while filming. It was yes. one of the married men on the set. Rumor Ooh. had it it was Matthew Vaughn, Vaughn but nobody yes. has. Nobody's nobody, confirmed that. Yes, yes. and she okay. will we not. We do not know, and we're not going to spread rumors no, here. Uh, I we're say not it's a rumor. It's not founded. Like, it's not but, founded. But absolutely. my problem with her is she didn't act for crap in the movie. She was annoying. She's a sucky actress. That's why. Why? Well, they could. They can. Maybe they can replace her digitally. That'd yeah. be awesome. Oh. Maybe wouldn't Brett, notice. And Brett could do her voice. I could do it. That mm. would be it. I, I could. I could. <laughs> I could. Yeah. They should replace it with Jar Jar Binks. Hey, I was just thinking the same thing. We're not going to start that. We're not going to start that. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> our last story is for our DC fangirl over there. So if you're a comic book fan like she is, you already probably have May 5th circled on your calendar. That's the date for, of course, this year's free comic book day. Now, Yay. last week, DC announced their plans for this year's free comic books. Now, according to DC's official blog, The Source, the, this year's offerings will include DC's comic New 52 free comic book day edition specifically okay so this includes art by jim lee a new story by chief creative officer and justice league scribe jeff jones Mm -hmm. just as uh, dc's 2011 free comic book day have contained short previews for the previous john and lee's justice league as well as interviews and previews of the next new 52 basically for 2012 and quickly for you folks that are watching the video feed uh sorry about the uh, graphic there that uh, was marvel stuff that was dc oops yeah that's okay Okay. I just play no. them. I don't get them. Yeah, well, it was a, it was last a, a last It's last comics related. It. <laughs> it's, a, it's a comic. It was a comic. It's that's actually, so. you know, the better comic book, you know, industry. Aww. But that's cool. That's Woo! all right. We like, well, we like Marvel better that. anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So I addressed as Wonder fight, Woman and fight, someone asked fight, me if I was fight. Captain America. Oh. Oh. That's you pretty bad. You should kick him yeah. with your Wonder Boots when that happens. Dumb? <laughs> oh, Maybe. Man. He's probably That's trying harsh. to press you. He's probably like, <laughs> You're Captain America. And I'm like, I'm Wonder Woman, you dolt. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Doofus. Yeah. Very bad word. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> so yeah, anyway, so right. um, really quickly, I have a new favorite show, new favorite movie that uh, from movie? last year. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, Tucker and Earl for, versus Tucker Evil. And Earl versus Dear Evil. God, that that's on was, my Netflix queue. I'm fixing to watch it. That is it's funny. Oh my God, it is funny. Tucker it and is Dale versus the Evil or versus, versus, versus evil. evil versus Evil. It yeah. is do, hilarious. Do it, not bother waiting for Netflix. Just go buy it. No, Just it's streaming. Go get it. Streaming. Just go get Just it. Go Just get it. I will buy own it. this movie as soon as I can own this movie. It is unbelievably. It's funny. got Wash, right? It's absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, he I uh, love Alan Wash. does a brilliant job in this movie, and it, and, and it, it is. It, yeah, it's just awesome. Awesome, the fantastic, awesome, awesome. fantastic I'm like a leaf film. On the wind. <laughs> it really is. Never heard of it. So, do we want to talk about Chuck finale? Oh. Uh, we got I've about we got about thirty seconds. I loved so it. That's not. Talk it about it. I loved it. Little. It had the perfect combination of funny. And nod to previous stuff in the series, and and heart and emotion. It was great. Wrapped up well. Uh, gee, okay. anybody else want to say anything? No, no we're out of time. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard See mixed on it. Actually, uh, the, from the voicemail, uh, from the uh, listener feedback show, you will discover that uh, there's a little mixed out there. Really? Yeah. yeah. So, I, just, I got so much like, joy out of the Jester. Bring so. them on. Yeah. Well, right. anyway, wow. that's going to do it for this show. Please go to Facebook, like us. We have a Facebook page, of course. Uh, YouTube, like you, you want to go to YouTube and watch us. And SliceOfSciFi.tv, you can watch all the fun there as well. Thanks so much, folks. We will see you again very, very soon.